Welcome back to Miles Morales Spider-Man right here at the Comic Story and Channel. This is where we take some of your favorite comic book storylines, we break down into a synopsis that I basically act out a little bit of, and then we tell you what's going on so that you know what's happening in your favorite comic books. There's a ton out there, but if you enjoy them, make sure to click the links down below, support the industry, and get to your local comic book store. Now, let's catch you up as to what's going on so we can get into this video. Miles Morales Spider-Man is originally from a universe known as the Ultimate Universe, and during the Secret Wars event a few years ago, they merged the universes, Ultimate and Regular, into one universe universe, and they've not really mentioned the Ultimate Universe since then. Well, recently, Miles Morales has been battling against a villain known as Ultimatum, who seems to know of the existence of the Ultimate Universe. He's also been battling against the Ultimate Green Goblin, which was the Green Goblin of the Ultimate Universe. Today, we're about to get a little bit more information as to what Ultimatum is doing and what is going on, as he has a chat with Prowler. And then we'll be moving on to the next part of our storyline, which is taking place during a period in Marvel Comics in which teen vigilantes aren't allowed because some of them got injured. So anyway, let's get into the story and tell you what's going on in Miles Morales. With Miles trying to focus on getting his life back together, one question that he has had is what happened to his Uncle Aaron? What happened to Prowler? Well, after being recruited by Ultimatum, Prowler was sent out to retrieve things for Ultimatum, and the latest being something from Herc's pharmaceutical. As Aaron quietly breaks in, he begins to crack a safe when he is suddenly surrounded by three armed guards. He reaches in, taking out the small vial, stating, It's a pleasant night, isn't it? He spins back, throwing the smoke bombs onto the ground, and then he makes for the exit. But with his entry point being too far away, he throws his daggers, cracking the window before jumping through it. As he escapes, Ultimatium radios in that tonight's drop-off will be slightly different. That the reagent will be delivered to him personally. Aaron ends the call stating, Oh, this can't be good. Once Aaron arrives at Ultimatum's home, he sees Goblin standing there. An Ultimate Green Goblin tells him, I'm supposed to check you for weapons. Aaron says that their boss is a man who can turn 20 feet tall and has a Captain America shield. It'll be okay. Ultimatum welcomes Aaron in, stating, Congratulations on another successful assignment. You've proven to be quite the asset to the organization, Aaron. Aaron hands him the vial, telling him that he means him no disrespect. But they could have had the normal drop-off like usual. Why bring him in personally? Ultimatum says that the chemical is the last piece of a puzzle that he's been working on his entire life. But that is not why he brought Aaron in. He brought him here to talk about another universe. There is the basics of the multiversal theory. However, the truth is the multiverse isn't just a theory, it's reality. People from other timelines walking these streets, creatures from other realities. And then there's us, two dudes from Brooklyn. How do we know about it, right? Well, here's the thing. I've seen another universe. Shoot, I've even robbed it. But it's done things to my mind. Forgotten lots of what I've already seen. But some things stick out. As Ultimatum pulls off his mask, Aaron looks at him asking, what the hell is that? It looks familiar. Ultimatum watches and says, it's true then. The further away from the event you get, the more of your memories of that place fade. They're almost gone already. Aaron takes off his mask asking, what are you talking about? And Ultimatum tells him that his body and mind are trying to reconcile with the unreconcilable. You see, I've learned a lot about this stuff. I went back and forth between two worlds trying to find my place. But now, I'm right where I belong. Care for a game of chess? Aaron sits down at the chessboard asking, Is this how you show me how deep you are? How you're just some basic Brooklyn thug under that ass-kicking suit? Ultimatum tells him, Nah. My point is, under it all, I am a basic Brooklyn thug. And I'm damn good at chess, too. The problem is, right now, you're only seeing part of the board. You need to see all the pieces together to figure it out. That's why I needed you to come here personally. Because you came from that other world. Aaron pauses for a moment and then asks, What? Ultimatum goes on telling him, You have the same energy as the things that I've stolen from that other world. But what's been bothering me is that you also share that signature with just one other person. Spider-Man. Gas begins to shoot out of the chessboard and Aaron is knocked out. And Ultimatum tells him, Spider-Man will be brought in soon enough, and when he is, we will all have a nice talk about where he came from. The next day, Miles heads off to school when his spider sense kicks in. He narrowly dodges a net when suddenly a man calls out to him. That man, along with a group of special agents, tells him that he is wanted for a suspected violation of Kamala's law. His name is Commander Timothy Dugan, 
acting under the authority of the Child Hero Reconnaissance and Distribution Law Enforcement. And if all of that is too much, he may call him Dum Dum. But he is here to bring in Spider-Man. Miles jumps up onto the water storage asking him, Dum Dum? Didn't you run with Captain America like back in the day? And now you're working for that senator, Patrick? Dum Dum yells, I am working for the United States of America. Do not make this harder than it needs to be, young man. Dum Dum tells him, I don't want to do this. Miles says, really? Did you even look at yourselves? Those uniforms make you look like fascists. Dum Dum tells him, I really don't want to do this. And Miles tells him, oh, you most definitely do. Miles leaves webbing up one of the agents, slamming him into another, and then webs up a third and a fourth. With one concentrated venom blast, Miles takes out the remaining individuals, and Dum Dum says, This is rather freaking embarrassing! Miles says, Hey, what's the language? I'm a kid, remember? Dum Dum takes out his stun baton, and he says, We have underestimated you. I figured you were just a junior Spider-Man, but now I have to deal with you. Miles cloaks himself, telling Dum Dum that he just needed to see what he was up against, but right now, he's got places to be. As Miles swings away, Dum Dum yells to everyone to switch to full spectrum sights. Find out where he went! The agents all look around, but eventually they all stop and they state that he's gone. A short while later, Miles quickly swaps into his street clothes and he sees all of the students waiting outside. He runs up to Genki asking what's going on, and Genki says that it's Cradle. They're doing a sweep looking for teen vigilantes. Miles scoffs, stating, oh, Man, they're here too? I just got done tussling with some agents on the way here. How come the government can't send this much money to the actual problems? But before the agents could get to him, a report comes in to everyone that Spider-Man has been spotted a few blocks from their location, and they're going to need to report in for backup. Miles lets out a sigh, stating, Oh, that was close. And Genki says, I hate this. I hate all of this. After school, Miles meets up with his parents for dinner at the diner. Jefferson asks, what's he been up to? Miles tells him that the Cradle agents tried arresting him. They tried arresting Spider-Man, and then they showed up at school. Jefferson says that that is a damn disgrace, taking kids away from their parents for no damn reason. And Rio says, actually, it's not for no reason. Miles looks at her shocked as she goes on stating that she is just saying that there is a reason. What he does makes her proud. There's no denying that, but she has to live her life with these blinders on. Lying to herself about all of the danger that she is in every day. She sees injured kids all day. Dead kids. This world is vicious. These people aren't crazy for thinking that you all need to be more careful. Miles scoffs, stating that he can't believe that his mom is taking the enemy's side. And Rio tells him that she's not taking sides. She will always be on his side. Don't ever forget that. But a short while later, and with full bellies, the conversations are forgotten. And the family enjoys their night out. Once the bill is paid, Miles asks if they're all heading back to the house, and Jefferson says that they're actually headed to a baby yoga class in about 10 minutes. So they'll meet up with them later. So Miles takes the train back home, still bothered by what his mother said. Maybe they're all a little desensitized to the superhero thing. Kamala Khan is sitting in a hospital right now, and he's so used to seeing her beat up. He can barely spare a thought for her, and that's not normal. That's not right. But right now, he's just too tired to think about what is. But as Miles opens up the door to his home, he sees the place torn apart. His spider sense goes off and he asks who's there, and that's when he's struck in the head. He tries to regain his balance, but the hits keep coming, faster than he can even keep up with. And as he falls to the ground, he looks up and sees another Spider-Man standing over him. And he says, no, it can't be. With Miles being knocked to the ground, the other Spider-Man webs up Miles' arm. The two struggle and Miles shouts asking who the other person is, but the Spider-Man doesn't answer. Miles manages to kick off the imposter, asking where did he get that knockoff suit? Canal Street? But as Miles attacks, the imposter jumps to the ceiling and sticks to it, with Miles asking, wait, you can wall crawl too? Who are? But before he can get an answer, the imposter lunges down, cracking him in the face, and Miles says, whoa, the strength is there. And the way he reacts, he's gotta have some spider sense too. Miles then clenches his fist, asking, but do you have this, though? In a flash, the room erupts in electricity, stunning the imposter and finally giving Miles a moment to breathe. With that taken care of, Miles looks around at the destroyed house, stating that he needs to figure this all out. But first, he has to warn his parents not to come home. As Miles calls, his mother, Rio, picks up the phone, stating that they're almost home. Is everything all right? And Miles yells at them not to come home yet! <laughs> There's someone! But before he could finish, his spider sense goes off as the imposter charges up a venom blast, launching Miles out of the building. Across the city, Rio calls out for Miles to answer her, and Jeffrey asks what's wrong. Rio says that she isn't sure. It sounded like Miles was in trouble. Jeffrey tells her not to worry. He'll handle it. Wait, when I say run, run. 
Rio picks up Baby Billy asking, what are you? And Jeffrey shouts, go! Rio gets ready to do just that, but soon the two of them are surrounded by a group of people in red suits, and one of them stating, sorry, mommy, but you're not going anywhere. Back at the apartment, Miles slowly picks himself up from the rubble while a pair of passerbys stop to see what's going on. He quickly cloaks up, climbing up the building to grab his hidden costume, and as the imposter makes his way up, Miles asks, can we just, like, have a conversation first? The imposter jumps in to continue the attack, and the two go back and forth with Miles yelling, Come on! Say something! Without responding to the voice, the imposter knocks Miles off the building, sending him crashing into the basketball goal below. Miles yells, Ah! You all gotta go! Get out of here! And even before he could finish that sentence, the imposter lands on him feet first. Miles rolls with the momentum, throwing the imposter off of him, and quickly gets up to his feet, stating, I gotta get this guy away from where people can get hurt. Come on! Follow me, bootleg! A few seconds later, Miles swings up to one of the higher buildings, and moments later, the imposter lands. He throws a venom blast punch, but Miles catches it, asking, You want to get into a contest with it? All right, let's see who has more juice. They both charge up their blasts, and as they begin to grow in power, Miles yells, If we keep going, we're both gonna die. Back in the streets, the thugs are slowly inching closer, and Jeffrey whispers to Rio that once there's an opening, she's gonna have to run like hell. Rio then asks what is he planning and Jeffrey tells her that he's gonna make an opening. Just then, Jeffrey bolts towards a car, jumping over the hood, forcing the group to follow him. Elsewhere, Miles slowly opens up his eyes in a dark room, hearing a voice telling him to wake up. He blinks, asking if that's Uncle Aaron. He just had the worst, but as his eyes begin to focus, he stops himself. No, 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 not you! Miles struggles in his restraints and the assessor taps on his tablet. Subject 002004 is now awake. Miles shouts for him to let him go, but the assessor tells him, As per our terms of agreement, Subject 002004 will now comply with all assessor's directives. Failure to comply with directives will result in disciplinary measures enacted on Subject 002007. A light flickers on and Miles looks over to see his uncle Aaron strapped to a chair asking, What did you do? And why did you send some fake in a spider suit instead of that blue fool? The assessor tells them that the Asset Quantum is indisposed, but they were impressed by the performance of Asset 42. As the imposter walks in, assessor removes the mask to reveal a Miles clone. Miles shifts in his chair asking, what the hell is that thing? An assessor tells them that Asset 42 is one of several proprietary technologies that they have developed for client U. Miles asks, was that what all this testing was for? To clone me? And another light blinds Miles as a voice tells him, I was a lot like that at that age. Smart. As the light fades, Miles' eyes widen as he sees the red suit and he yells, Ultimatum! Ultimatum tells him that he's been looking forward to this for a long time. You may go now, Assessor. Once the Assessor leaves, Asset 42 cloaks itself, and Miles asks, what has he done to Prowler? Ultimatum laughs, <laughs> that's good. Probably wanted to say Uncle Aaron, didn't you? That's right, I know all of your secrets. Like how Aaron here booby-trapped his suit so that it couldn't be removed. But eventually, I got through to him. He'll be fine, as long as you both cooperate. Miles asks, what? Running Brooklyn's Underground wasn't enough? Ultimatum laughs, no, no, no. Running is not the same as owning. Being the biggest isn't the same as being the only. A hologram map appears with several goblin markers scattered about, and Ultimatum goes on telling him, Tonight! I'll be taking ownership of Brooklyn. I'll kill every single criminal in this borough that has even an ounce of leadership potential. Miles tells him there's no way that he has the manpower for that. An ultimatum tells him, while that's true, it's why I've been growing my own manpower. The personal army of the goblinoids. Miles pauses for a moment and then says, Goblin, the drug, those mini green goblins at the school, that's why you've been pushing your drugs so cheap. He turns people into those things. Ultimatum tells him, that's right. Synthesized from the goblin's blood and when activated, it turns people into my slaves. Miles then asks why he's telling him all of this instead of just killing him. And as Ultimatum removes his mask, he tells him, because we're one of the same. Because I am Miles Morales and you are a trespasser. The older Miles Morales leans in telling him, it's all coming back now, huh? The memories. You were ripped away from another Brooklyn. Reborn here. Ultimatum walks off. I was Miles Morales before you arrived. And it's time for the trespasser to return to where you came from. 
Ultimatum pulls down a tarp covering a giant machine and Miles tells him, You're nuts. You're absolutely nuts. Ultimatum tells him, Do not worry. You're not going alone. Everything from that world needs to go back. Every one, including your parents. Ultimatum turns on a screen to see his thugs and he sees Jeffrey standing over them. Jeffrey tells him, I know what's going on. These guys are pretty chatty once their butts are whipped. I'll show you what happens when someone goes after a man's family. Rio begins shouting and cursing, and then Miles hears something as Aaron runs over telling him to get ready. Miles begins to ask how, but Aaron throws a small explosive telling him, There's no time, Miles! The bomb goes off, knocking Ultimatum out, and Miles asks, Is he dead? But Aaron tells him, No. I wish, but no. We only have a few minutes left. The two begin to run out, and Miles says that he's starting to remember things. The stuff that Ultimatum was talking about. And Aaron tells him, Yeah, me too. And it's a lot, but right now, we need to keep moving. Before they can get outside, Asset 42 stands there with a group of Ultimatum's men. Miles charges in to take out his counterpart, and as he hits him, Asset 42's face begins to liquefy. After punching Asset 42 in the chest, Miles begins to pull his hand out of the goopy mess, and Aaron tells him, FOCUS! That thing is just a lab experiment. Burner clones, cheap and disposable. Only meant to last a day, don't let it psych you out. Miles punches the head in so hard that it explodes in a fleshy glorp. And Miles says that he does not want to do that again. Aaron hurries up, opening up a window for their escape. And as Miles follows, he says they need to hurry up and find his parents. And then Aaron stands back, putting his back against Miles, telling him, Yeah, it's not going to be that easy, Miles. As the goblinoids all close in, the goblin himself begins to laugh as he walks towards them. And there you have it, another cliffhanger in the Miles Morales storyline. Now, as I've said before, we do like to do big four to seven issue storylines. This particular one is a storyline that has been going on for like 19, 20 issues now. So we keep breaking it up into these cliffhangers for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as next Monday we'll bring you the next part of Miles Morales. And you can hit that like button. And if you want early access, make sure you go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash comic storian, where you get early access and unedited versions of our podcast. Thank you so much, Patreons and YouTube memberships. You guys are the ones helping us get through all of their rough COVID times and keeping these videos coming out. And everyone else who just watched the video, thank you so much for your support as well.